Hey guys, uh, so you join me in glorious 4K today. Uh, I'm trying out a camera. It's not it's not going to be mine. It's a work camera, so uh, I'm just trying to figure it out. But uh, we're using it for today's little experiment. And what we're going to be doing today is figuring out how to turn a microcontroller on and have it turn itself off when it's connected to battery power. Now, the reason I want to do this is because I want to create an internet button. And I'd like that button to only draw power when it's switched on and switch itself off after it's finished. Uh, sounds simple enough, but it isn't actually that easy. Well, it kind of is. I'll show you how it's done. So we're going to be using a couple of components and some sort of passive type stuff. So the first thing we're going to be using is one of these. This is a BS170 and that's an N-channel MOSFET, an enhanced channel MOSFET. Uh, and we're going to be using a 2N3906, which is a PNP transistor. We're going to use a button, a few other components, an LED just for indication, some resistors, uh, an extra one there, and a bunch of wires. So first off, we're going to draw the schematic and make sure that we get everything right to start with. And it's a relatively simple schematic. So we'll start off with our microcontroller, shall we? So I'm not going to draw the whole thing. We'll just draw it as a little box at the side, I think. So this is whatever microcontroller you have. In this case, we're using an Arduino Nano. Uh, and we've got two pins that we're going to be using from the micro to help visualize and also control. So pin 13 is going to be our control signal. And then we've got pin 12 on this micro is our visualization signal. So this, in this case, it's going to an LED. Uh, to ground, uh, LED. Uh, so this is our, our Nano here. So that's the microcontroller section. And now we need to get to the circuitry section. Uh, in fact, there's one more signal we'll draw on there, in a, but we'll do that in a second. Uh, we don't need to do it just now. The first thing we want to do is to draw out our MOSFET. Now this is really the heart of the system. You could you can turn it on with the MOSFET and keep it on without having the transistor, that's fine. But we'll draw that in now. So you'll have to forgive my drawings, they're not going to be great. So I'll draw the MOSFET in. So that's a really bad drawing of a MOSFET, but you'll, uh, you'll have to forgive that. Um, and we've got uh, several connections on here, but first off, this is our base, sorry, our gate. Uh, and that's going to need to go to our button. So let's put our button up here. I'm just going to draw it as a switch rather than a button. But let's imagine that it's a momentary switch. This is going to go off to our batteries, so BAT+. plus. And then we need to have a resistor to hold this MOSFET off going to BAT ground. So BAT minus. Now that will switch on our circuit if we connect this here to, let's say, nano minus. So it's going to go to the microcontroller's ground. And this will go to BAT minus. So our microcontroller has a, a plus feed. So this is going to be our 5 volt line, but we're going to put that into BAT plus, and then we have nano minus. So we're, uh, we're doing low side switching. Now, I could press this button and turn on the Nano as it stands, but we want to be able to turn off the Nano itself. It needs to be programmatically done. Uh, our pin 12 here going to this LED is just for indication. I've already programmed the microcontroller with the necessary code to flash that LED and control pin 13. Now, how do we turn off this N-channel MOSFET? Well, we're going to be using a transistor in this case, and the transistor we're going to use is a 2N3906 PNP transistor. 
We're going to be connecting the transistor to the gate. So if I just draw our transistor over here somewhere. And then our transistor will be connected to five volts, not five volts actually, that's going to be to uh, back plus, sorry. And then this end goes to the gate of the MOSFET. And then we want this to go to pin 13, but we're going to be going through pin 13 via a resistor. And that's going to be a 1K resistor. And this is a 300 ohm resistor. And that is it. That's our entire circuit. So let me explain what happens. So our Nano, when it boots up, will uh, put pin 13 high. That will turn on this transistor. So uh, when we push this button for the N-channel MOSFET, we turn on the MOSFET. We enable ground on the Nano. The Nano is already connected to the battery positive, so it should turn on the Nano. Pin 13 will then hold that, uh, that signal high, keeping the MOSFET on. Uh, and we'll be flashing this LED so we can see what's happening. And then when the Nano decides that it no longer needs to have power or it's completed its task, it will turn off pin 13, which then grounds out this MOSFET through this resistor, which is uh, 1K. So let's build the circuit and see if it works. So we're gonna start off putting our MOSFET in. So we'll just bung it somewhere on the board, put it on the edge of the board here doesn't particularly matter where it is as long as we've got some space for this switch. Let's pop the switch in now. Oh, I've bent the, uh, the pin there. There we go. So what we want to do is, according to our schematic actually, it's a good idea to look at that. So we've got background going from the source pin. So let's pop that into ground up there. I'm not going to color code any of these wires. And then our gate goes to a 1K resistor going to background. So let's pull a 1K resistor out. I'll just connect that to the other side. And then we also need our gate to go to the switch. So let's just jump that over to one side of the switch. And then the switch also needs to connect to BAT plus. So the other side of the switch over to BAT plus. We're gonna plug our battery in over on this rail here. Now we also need to connect the source to our nano. So let's pop one there and then where's ground? Ground can be at this top one here. Now the nano also needs to be connected through the five volt pin to BAT plus. So we'll do that there. And that should be enough to turn our circuit on. So let's plug the battery in and we'll see if that is wired up correctly. So it should be on while we hold down the switch. Yeah, uh, I've got a little, I can't really see that too well, but there's a, a light on the microcontroller while I'm holding the switch. And if I take my finger off, it switches off. So now we need a way of holding that open. So let's pop our transistor in. I've got a little diagram here of uh, the, the pinout for the transistor because it's easy to forget with these. So we've got a collector, base and emitter. And if uh, I'll take the battery out for now, we don't need that hanging around over the schematic. And we can see from our schematic here, we've got the emitter connected to battery positive. Confusingly, I'm using a black cable for that. 
and then we've got our base connected via a 1k resistor so let's jump that over to pin 13 I'm going to use this really long yellow wire and then we've got uh, the collector connected to the gate of the MOSFET. Just need to find a little space in there. There we go. Now we want to add an indicator LED just so that we can see what's happening. So if I pop a an LED into positive on in the breadboard and we'll pop a resistor into here and then put that over to pin 12 it's a little bit difficult to see I know what's what's going on here but uh, hopefully the uh, schematic will be enough to, to show you and so if I press this button now the microcontroller turns on flashes that LED and in after five flashes it should go off because it uh, it's got a 10 second delay this is flashing every second so it's it's only going to be on for those five seconds Okay, well that's pretty much it. If you guys have any suggestions or comments, I would love to hear them. Um, I don't know if this is actually drawing any current, if there's any kind of leakage here with the, uh, the gate on the MOSFET, if, uh, if that's actually a thing, I'm not sure. But it should be an easy way of having a very low current device uh, that you just press a button on and it turns it on. The BS170 actually is limited to about 150 milliamps. Should be fine for an ESP8266. It's certainly okay for this Nano in this uh, format that it's in. Uh, but it's just a bit of fun. Oh, and incidentally, do you remember I was doing this weird clock? Weird clock. It's just a DIY clock. And I'd soldered the battery in the wrong way around. Well, um, someone said, let us know how it works. If it's still working, if the battery's uh, recovered a little bit. And it has, it's keeping the time is the wrong way around. It is keeping the time. Uh, so that is the current time. It's, uh, it's bang on actually, so it's not lost any time yet. So that DS1306 or 1307 is still working. And it is 11 degrees in here. It is pretty cold.